to your fifth session. So today, uh, please remember to also put, uh, not put, what do you call that now? Sorry. Complete the register. Let me first quickly uh, post the register on the chat. Just give me a second. Oh, where's the register? Okay, please make sure that you complete the register. And we can start with today's session. So today we're going to be talking about annuities. You're going to learn skills on how to answer questions relating to um, annuities. Do you have any questions before I start with the session? Okay, in the absence of any question, then we can start. Um, for today's session, you also need or you require your calculator and those your financial calculator, SHAP EL738 calculator. Those with no uh, financial calculator, then you need to know how to use your formulas and identify your formulas, the correct formulas. Okay, so by the end of the session today, you should be able to learn how to do basic calculations when it comes to annuities. You should be able to calculate the present value of an annuity and also the future value of an annuity. <clears throat> Annuity is just sequential payment made at an equal interval. So these are just payments. And also the payments are, um, that you make at a, or the payment interval are also referred to the time between successive um, payments that you are making. So it means if it's compounded monthly, therefore it means you're going to be making payments on the monthly basis. If it's quarterly, you're going to be making payments on a quarterly basis. If it's yearly, the payment will be yearly basis. The term will be for how long you are going to pay or how long you are going to save. So this is the time from the beginning of the first payment until the end of the last payment that you have. Future value of an annuity will refer to all accumulated amounts or the sum of all values or, or payments made. And um, this also include the interest at the end of the term. And your present value, this will be your sum of all the payments that you are making and each of them being discounted at the beginning of the term because then does not include interest. Like with the compounding periods, with annuities as well, because you are going to calculate it using the compounding um, periods uh, for how many periods you are going to make those payments. They are compounded. So you need to be able to know the compounding periods. I'm not going to go through all of them. Uh, we've covered them the previous time. So it is just to remind you that we're still going to work with compounding periods. So in terms of calculating the present value of an annuity, we need to be calculating payment and the payment in this instance is R. So P will represent your present value. So the present value of an annuity, do not ask me what this 
symbol is. It's a shortcut symbol to calculating an annuity. So as you can see there, it says payment of an annuity based on the number of terms and your interest. So this, don't ask me how do you calculate that, because how do you calculate that? It is this formula there, which is R times the accumulation accumulative um, term, which is one plus your interest to the power of your term minus one, <clears throat> divide by interest times one plus interest, to the power n, multiplying by r, which your r will be your payment. So you can use this formula to calculate the present value of an annuity. Those who are using the financial calculator, you do not have to worry about the formula, but you need to know, you need to be able to know what the formula looks like as well. So this is to calculate the present value of an annuity. Otherwise, with your financial calculator, we're still going to use the same steps that we have been using by clearing our calculator, putting in the compounding periods first, on and off, doing the plus or minus. If we are given the present value, put in the present value. If we're given the, the payment, put in the payment, and then calculating whatever we want to calculate, including also capturing your interest and your period and then computing either the present value or the future value or the payment or even you can even compute your interest or the period depending on what you are given. So the steps are almost exactly the same. Nothing changes. So let's look at an example. If we need to calculate the present value of an annuity of 1,600 payments made quarterly for five years at an interest rate of 20% per annum compounded quarterly. Now, we need to first understand what we are given in the question. So, and what is the question asking us to do? So we can see from here, it says, we need to calculate the present value of a payment made, which the payment, which is our R, so we need to calculate the present value. So we need to find P. If we are given the payment, which is our R, for five years, which is our N, at an interest of 20%. Remember, if we're going to be calculating this manually, we are going to divide by 100. So this will be 0, 0,2, which is our I, or our rate. And we are also, what are we given? Compounding periods. And because it's quarterly, how many compounding periods are quarterly? What is our compounding period? Hmm? Just wanted to check if you guys are able to hear me. Nobody is talking to me. Okay. Uh, Candy says it's four years. Compounding periods, therefore, you need to keep on talking to me because I can look at the chat as well so that I can also know that people are behind the presentation because I'm not seeing you guys. So there are four. So now we know, and then we also need to identify the formula that we need to be using to calculate. So, and that is the formula that we're going to be calculating, the present value of an, our, our annuity and we substitute the values. Always remember your interest, it's divided by the compounding periods. That's the other thing that you always need to remember. When we, when we answer questions and they are compounded, the interest and the periods is going to be multiplied, whereas the interest is divided by the compounding period. So our interest of 0 0.2 divided by the compounding periods, which are 4, and our period n multiply by 4 because the uh, compounding periods were 4. And we just substitute the values onto the formula and calculate. So removing them, everything that is inside the bracket, doing the division first, and we get the answer of 0 0.05 for 0 0.2 divided by 4. And then we simplify it further and then we get the answer of 19 
0.35. And that's how you will calculate the present value of an annuity. Any question? Any comment? Is everything clear? Yes, it's Are clear. Are you a good? Yes. yes. So let's look at the same step if we have our financial calculator. So using your financial calculator, it's the same thing. So you will be given the statement You both. Those with no financial calculator will use formulas. With the financial calculator, you just need to also follow the same. Identify what the question is asking you. The question is asking us to calculate the present value. So therefore, it's asking us to calculate PV, which is the present value. What else are we given in the question? We are told that 1,600 is our payment, therefore it is PMT. So on our calculator, there is, now we can introduce this. We're still going to work on those functions. Those functions are very important, and we're going to work on second function, on and off, and the mode, and what else, ENT, and the number buttons. Those are the only things that we're going to be working on. So let's see, and nothing else. So we know that now we're introducing PMT, which is payment, and our five years is N, and the interest is I slash Y, our compounding periods, which is P slash Y, which is equals to four. Now, because we're using the steps, you first need to write the steps down before you can even start typing on your calculator or pressing buttons on your calculator. So let's write the steps down. We know that we first need to clear our calculator by pressing second function and the mode. So we need to go second function mode, which is second function CA. And then we capture the, <clears throat> then we're going to capture the compounding period by pressing second function P and Y, which is on the I and Y, we press the slash I slash Y, and we put in four because there are four compounding periods. That's why we write the four, and then we press the ENT button. Now we can go and press the on and off button because now we stored on the memory of the calculator the compounding periods. To start capturing the data, let's start with the payment. We first need, oh, I forgot about the plus or minus. We first need to press the plus or minus. So you'll say plus or minus 1,600. And then you're going to press, press uh, sorry, payment, because that is the payment. So you're going to say plus or minus 1,600 PMT, because this is the payment given. Then you go and put in the period. Now you're going to say five, second function, and then you press N, and then you press N again. The first time when we press N, we're multiplying with the compounding periods because we're calling this function at the top, which is written in orange. The first time you say five, second function, N, by calling the compounding period. So we're multiplying our period n five years multiplied by the compounding period but we also need to store that value by pressing n again so you will save five second function n n again so this is the same as remembering n n again so n n you will press n twice and once you are done you can put in the interest which is 20 Remember, on your calculator, the value as you see them, you put them on your calculator as you see them. So it will be 20, and you press the I and Y. Then we are ready to calculate the present value. So you will press COMP PV, COMP PV, and that will give you your present value, which is your discounted value at the beginning of the term. That is your present value, your sum of all the payments at the beginning of the term. That is easy and straightforward. As you can see, the steps looks exactly the same 
for the calculator, whether you asking or calculating questions relating to present value and future value for compounding period, or you doing for payment, the only thing is PMT. Remember, if you are given the, the present value and you are asked to calculate payment, the first value you capture after you do your on and off, especially if it's payment, future value, or present value, you need to first put the plus or minus. If you don't put the plus or minus, your calculator will give you a negative answer. You need to be very careful on that. So only the first number, whether it's present value, future value, or uh, uh, present value or payment, you need to press plus or minus first for the first one. So if in the question they give you payment and present value and they want you to calculate the interest, one of them, either payment or present value, will have a plus or minus in front of them. Okay. Now it's time for the exercise. What is the present value of an annuity of 1,500 payable at the end of six months period for two years if money is worth 8% compounded semi-annually? We can do this one together, but you will have to do the calculations. So, the question is asking us to calculate the present value. So it means we need to find PV or P. What are we given? The payment, because it's payable at the end of each six months. This is additional information, but it's the same as semi-annual right six months you must know what six months mean uh, in terms of compounding periods so this is our payment this is our n this is our interest compounded semi-annually or six months so what is our compounding periods how many compounding periods will they be Two. There will be two. So knowing that, here is the formula for those who want to use the formula or who don't have a financial calculator. Please calculate the present value. I'm also going to put the steps for those who are using financial calculator. So remember, you need to write the steps first before you start calculating. Second function. Let's do that. Second function, CA, we also always want to clear our calculator. Second function, P slash Y, which is on the I and Y. And then you're going to put in your compounding periods. And then you're going to press E and T. Then you're going to go on and off your calculator. I'm going to press plus or minus. I'm leaving the blanks because I want you to keep put in the actual value because then you will be able to tell me what values are in there. And this is your payment because that's what they have given you. And eight. Oh, why am I giving you the answer? Let me not give you eight. Let me give you a block. And because I started with that one, I'm going to change it. Second function, and I'm going to press the N, N again. And I'm going to press the, put the, the block. And yeah. Hmm. I'm going to press the I and Y. And I'm going to ask you to comp. And that will be the present value. So those who are calculating manually, I just want to get some of the values here, yeah, right? We know that our R is 1,500. We know that our N is two times the compounding period of two, which is equals to four. Therefore, it means there will be four payments made for that in, within that two years. And our I, 
is 0, 0,08 divided by 2, which will be 0, 0,04. 0, 0, so you just use those values to substitute into your formula. Okay, and then you can tell me which one is the correct answer. I'm going to go to the chat to look at your responses. Um, the other thing is that my battery is on 20% and my house is dark. Let's see if I can increase the brightness on the laptop. It is 100% my battery on the laptop. I'm good. It can still go on. But then I can see. I won't be able to see on the calculator when I calculate because the numbers are not visible. My screen is dark. Okay, anyway. While you're still busy, I'm going to go look if I have a candle. Okay, ma'am. No, it's fine. I was I was using the daylight now it's becoming darker outside. So I'm gonna look for a candle, I'll be back. Just wait. Yes. Okay, it's working. I need. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> now I'm able to see my screen. Okay, can continue. I see here we have two, two, two as an option. So how do we answer the question? We'll start with the calculator one. Do you want me to tell you? Yes, uh, you can tell me the, the values and then I will put the numbers. So the first, second function PY, what do we put here? Two. Then E and T on and off, plus or minus? One five. One thousand five hundred. That will be our PMT and Two. what do we put here? Second function N, N again and I and Y. Eight. We put eight. Then when you press COM, PV. 
You get? Five, four, 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 comma, eight, four. There we go. So those who are calculating manually so that we don't leave you behind as well. So it will be P is equals to 1,500 times one plus our interest of 0, 0,04. I like working them out first before I substitute into the formula so that then my calculations are clean and it saves time. Over four minus one. Everything. Zero point zero four times one plus zero point zero four to the power four. And I'm going to guess that if you calculate this on your case, your calculator that you are using. Let's see if I'm able to get to my case. Here. I still don't have a license for it. I'll still renew my license for the case. Here. So do you also get 5,000? So I'm going to assume that you also get 5,444.84. OK. Any questions? No. It was clear, right? Yes. Okay. So that was the present value of an annuity. Sometimes you need to calculate the future value because they are not only going to be interested in the present value, but they need you to calculate also the future value. So in order to calculate the future value, we use S, which is the future value, is given by your R, which is your payment times the accumulation factor, which will be one plus your interest to the power N minus one divided by your interest. That is the simplest formula. Okay, so in order for you to calculate that, let's look at an example. Jack will need to pay 20,000 to buy his brother car in two years time he wants to start saving part of his weekly salary into the account that will retain 8.5 interest per annum compounded weekly calculate the minimum weekly payment that he needs to make into the investment account to have enough money in two years time so we need to understand what is the question asking us what do they want us calculate the minimum weekly payment that is what they are asking us so they are asking us to calculate r o p m t that's what they are asking now what have they gave us what is it that they gave us that will help us to answer that question we need to read the sentences again jack will need twenty thousand to buy his brother's car so he will need that. That's what you will need in future. So that will be your future value, right? In two years time, that is our period. Or our term N. So this is our future value. That is our period. He wants to start saving part of his salary on a weekly basis into the return that gives 8.5, which means this is our interest, right? Which will be, if I'm going to use my financial calculator, it's 8.5. If I'm not going to use my financial calculator, it will be 0, 0.085. Remember to keep all of it. So I'm also going to do this too, because later on I want to multiply. And they say it is compounded weekly. What are the compounding periods? 52. That will be 52 weeks. Let's see if I have the formula. So if this is our formula, then we just substitute into the formula. So it's 0, 0.885. 0, 0.085 divided by 52, which is our I. 
So when you do the calculation, do this outside of the formula, just come here and substitute into this the actual value. So I'm just demonstrating here that you need to divide your interest by the compounding period of 52. And you need to also multiply your period by the compounding period of 52. So you substitute into the formula. Now we're not given R because R is what we need to be calculating, right? That's what they are asking us. We are given the future value, which is your S, which is 20,000. And then we just divide the accumulation factor with the 20,000. After you have simplified, you will just divide the answer you get for the bracket. 20,000 divided by that answer, and the answer was 113.23 and some numbers. And when you divide that, you get 176.58. So in two years, he needs to make 176 cent and 58, uh, 176 rand and 58 cent weekly payment in order to get to 20,000. That's what Jack needs. If I'm using a financial calculator, the steps are the same. Clear your calculator from any stored value. Put in the compounding period. On and off your calculator. Put the present or the future value because that's what we have. We are given the future value. Put in the interest. And your period. Remember all these three steps, all of them. There is no order that says you first need to do future value first. You can even start with the interest, then the, the period, then the last thing you do is put in the, the, the future value. So you can interchange them. Doesn't say these are the steps, stick to them, but you need to make sure that you have all three of them. Um, at least three of the values captured before you compute whatever you are asked to compute. So here we were asked to compute the weekly payment. And when you press compute, the answer should give you 176.38. Okay, and that is annuities for future value and present value done. Now we can go into doing more exercises. Find the lump sum that one must invest in an annuity in order to receive 1,000 at the end of each month for the next 16 years. If the annuity pays 9% of the compounded monthly. So what will be that lump sum that is required? I'm going to give you two minutes to think about it, to do it, to try it. Five minutes, actually, let's say five minutes. And then we will come back. I will ask you how you answer it. But if you have the answer, you can put it on the chat, but we will do some feedback. So your five minutes starts right now.
Are you winning? Are you winning? Yes, we are. Um, you know that on the chat function, when someone posts something, you are able to use the emojis. So I'm tempted to use an emoji on the answer that I already see on the on the chat. Let me see if there are no nice other emojis again. It's only those ones. Whether should I say I'm laughing? I am surprised. <laughs> I'm sad. Or should I say I'm angry? Your oh, angry is very worse. Okay. I'm joking. All right. Are you still waking up? And this also says three. <laughs> if there was an emoji called ha, <laughs> it'd be surprised. Maybe let me use surprised. Surprise. Because I think that is the closest ah. one to aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm very unsure of myself because I don't know if I'm doing future value or present value. <laughs> That's what I'm, I'm, I'm saying the only emoji I can put for your two responses there is ah. <laughs> so there's no ah. They surprised. <laughs> okay, others, are you still calculating? Let's let us not disturb you. <laughs> you will notice that I'm not loving it or I'm not I'm not liking it. I'm saying, ah. So it means go and read the question again. <laughs> I'm joking. But yes, go and read the question. <clears throat> it's a very tricky question. Okay, how is everybody doing now? It is almost more than five minutes. Uh, struggling, a, struggling a bit. Yeah. Are you using a financial calculator or are you calculating manual? Manual. Okay. Uh, let's save everyone some time before they even continue. So let's read the question and then you will tell me. Sorry. Find the lump sum that one must invest in an annuity, right? Find a lump sum that one must invest in an annuity in order to receive a thousand at the end of each month for the next 16 years. If the annuity pays, Nine thousand compounded monthly. Okay. 
find the lump sum that one must invest in in an annuity in order to receive 1,000 rand at the end of each month for the next 16 years. If the annuity pays 9% compounded monthly. Is this what they're asking us? Are we calculating a present value or a future value of an annuity? It's a future value. I don't know. I'm being honest. I don't know. I'm unsure. I thought it was future value first, and then I said, no, it must be present value because you must invest it before you get payments. If the annuity pays 9% compounded monthly, remember that is a thousand at each of every month for the next 16 years, right? Yes. So, in order for the annuity to pay a thousand every month, how much you need to be investing for the next, um, how much lump sum you will have, Oh, how much lump sum you need to invest in an annuity in order to receive a thousand. So it's like the question is like asking you to go backwards. Isn't it? It's a very tricky one. You might interpret it as find the lump sum that one must invest in an annuity because then if I invest 102 and it pays a thousand every month for the next 16 years, but that is not the money you're going to be receiving. However, if I have saved, an annuity will be able to pay me a thousand run in the next 16 years if that annuity has accumulated interest of 9% monthly. So therefore it means you need to be calculating the future value of that or the present value, the future value of that. Because once you have invested, you've got saved up money and from for 16 years, you will be receiving a thousand. So the question is asking me to calculate the future value, isn't it? That's correct. That's correct. So if it's asking us to calculate the future value, then we need to calculate second function, CA, second function, P slash Y, our our compounding periods will be 12 because it's monthly and then you press E and T and then you go on and off your calculator plus or minus our present so we give in the payment because that's what you're going to be receiving every now and then a thousand which is your payment and your 
interest is nine, I and Y. What else? The period is 16 of second function and, and again. And this is how much you should have in your annuity in order to receive that. That is your future value should be that much. And what will be that future value that you have? That will give you a return every month for 16 years. That will allow you to get a thousand rent. Every month. With interest of 9%. If you calculate that, you should get the answer there. I don't know what answer will that be. Um, so if we're using the future value here, then it's R times one plus I to the power N minus one divided by I. So also that will be a thousand. So your R will be a thousand, your I, will be 0, 0,09 divided by 12. Your N will be 16 multiplied by 12. And that will be the values that we substitute onto the, the calculator. What is 0 0.09 divided by 12? It's 0, 0.0. 0 0.0075. And what is your period? It is 12 multiplied by 16. There will be how many payments you will receive in 16 years? 192 payments. Mm. 192 payments in the next 16 years that you will receive. And that will be one plus our interest of 0, 0.075 to the power of 192 minus one divided by 0, 0.0075. And if you calculate that, you should get the same answer as the others. So what do you get? Let's see, because you guys, you don't want to talk to me. So the other one says it's number four. Lizzie, I'm sorry. I'm having network issues. I also have network issues. It's but you. Are you able to hear me? Yeah, it's like in and up. Is yes, I can hear you, but then I want to know how, how, how did you get the lump sum to invest? Isn't that the money that you need to invest? At the end of the day, you will get 1000 bucks for 16 years. Yes. But how, how do you invest a future amount? Remember, this will be the amount that allows you to receive a thousand at the end of each month, right? It's not the amount that you need to be saving, right? Like it's not the it's not this is not the payment that you need to be making every month in order to receive that in the the future value. So this is the future value. This is the thousand rand that you will receive from the amount you would have saved. So if yes. you use the present value, remember yes. present value, you need to be making oh, payments on it, mm -hmm. isn't it? The metric is an issue now. I've got the thousand, the thousand rand is the payment that yeah. you were received, but from what amount? Because you need to put something in for you to receive or oh, am I getting it wrong? I I'm confused now. Oh, 
I'm on the same page as Nung Vui, so I think the same thing. I think you need to work out your present value because your money earns interest over the 16 years that's in there as well. Hmm. No, remember now, wait, 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 wait. Remember now, you thinking about the um, the compounding interest here, it's asking you what will be that amount that allows you that in the next 16 years you will receive a thousand rent. In the, at the end of each month, in the next 16 years, what will be that amount? Now, this is like, if you have a savings account, how much will that saving pay you every month for 16 years? That's what it's saying. It's not about how much money you need to put in in order for, for you to receive a lump sum at the end of 16 years, right? Read the question. Okay. In order to receive each month for the next 16 years. So how much it will you will be having payments given to you, not payments you are saving or saving. How much money you will have in order to allow you to receive more a thousand rand every month. with interest of 9% compounded monthly. So you need to have some money that it's going mm -hmm. to, uh, yes, it's going to yeah. allow you at the end for 16 years to receive a thousand with interest of 9%. And that is not a hundred and seven, a hundred and one. That won't give you that because that would be the future, mm -hmm. the present value if you are going to be making payments, if you are going to put money into that, then that will be that. But this one says, if you're going to be receiving the thousand for the next 16 oh, years. Okay. okay. That is why yeah, the, okay. trick, the trick about this question comes in. So it's you need to read the question and make sure that you understand what they are asking you. So let's go back to here. I need to buy this much. I need to make a payment every week of this much. That's what we calculated. We said, oh, not this one. It was the, the other one. So in order for me to get that, which is my future value then, I need to be making payment of this. Back to the other one was the present value. So in order for us, which one was the present? In order for me, if I'm going to be making a payment of 1,500 for the next two years, this will be my present value. This will be my value at the beginning in two years with interest of eight. So when I start at the beginning, I will be putting 1,500. That is the present value at the beginning. The future value will be, if I put the same, but remember this one is discounted. It will be discounted. Um, interest will be discounted. That is why at the bottom here, we divide by the interest times the accumulation factor of that one plus I N. It makes a huge difference that the, 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 the thing that you are dividing by. So you will notice that if you take the same amount and you use your future value, your value here will be more than that because that will be the lump sum at the end. This is the lump sum at the beginning. Now, the lump sum at the beginning is different to the lump sum at the end. Because now the two questions are totally different. The one question that we are on, it says the amount needs to allow you to receive money. It's like if I'm banking, I'm banking, I'm banking, and then at the end I've got this money. If I take out a thousand every month for the next 16 days, how much should I have in this future value account? 
that I have. Okay. Not, yeah, not this, because if I have money here, then I'm still going to add, add, add until I get to until the future. Get the, okay. So here yeah. it says, if I have this money, which is in the future mm -hmm. of this amount, how much it will allow me to take out a thousand every month? For the next 16 years. No, okay, I get, I guess the question now. Thank you very much. All right, for the next 16 mm. years. And it says you receive an annuity. It's not like you're making a payment. You are going to be withdrawing. This is the withdrawal. Okay, so, and that will calculate the future value. And that's the formula that I wanted to share, but I over, I wrote on top of it. But that is the formula you will use. Okay, so we can continue with the exercises. So it means also you need to pay attention when you read the questions. Not everything as you see for the first time. Remember, you need to make sure that you understand what exactly are they asking you and what kind of information have they provided you in order to help you answer your question. That is very important to identify. Okay, so let's read the next one. Maybe this one will be as easy as possible. A farmer needs 250000 to purchase a 10-ton trailer. The bank approves the loan for the full amount. The interest rate is 18% per year, compounded monthly. The loan has to be paid off in five years' time. Determine the farmer's minimum monthly payment. The farmer needs 250000 to purchase the loan. The bank approves the full amount. Determine the rate at 18% per annum. Compounded monthly, and the loan has to be paid off in five years' time. Determine the farmer's minimum monthly payment. What is it that we are given here? Is it the present value or the future value? Before you even start calculating, what is this 250,000? Present value. That will be your present value. So now, when it comes to annuities, always remember that savings are future. Saving, that's the other thing that I also need to, to raise with you. So mostly savings, always warrants for the future value. Loan is your present value. So if you get questions where they talk about savings, it means probably they're talking about, because at the beginning, you don't have anything if you're not, you, if you having, if you're not putting in a, um, a deposit, you don't have anything because it's saving. So you're going to accumulate money and have a future value, that is saving. A loan, a bank gives you the money. When they give you the money, that is the money you have, and you need to pay it back. So that is your present value that you have, but you need to make payments to pay it back so that you can end up having a zero amount. Whereas with saving, you're going to have an accumulated amount at the end of that period. So you always need to think about it in this way as well. Okay, so we know that we are given the present value. What else are we given in this question? The interest of 18%, compounding periods, there will be 12. The loan has to be paid in five years. Five years. Time. Which is the period. So you can continue and do your calculation. So, because we're using the present value of an annuity, I'm going to put it there. So, we know that our P is 250,000. Our interest is 0, 0,18 divided by the compounding periods, which are 12. Our N 
which is 5 times 12, and you can find the answer. And then you're going to use P is equals to R times 1 plus I to the power N minus 1 divide by I times 1 plus I to the power N. That's the formula you're going to be using. Second function, CA, you're going to write those who are using financial calculator. Second function, P slash Y, and then you put in your compounding period and you press E and T, you go on and off. And okay, this one, you need to put the plus or minus first plus or minus, and you're going to press or put in your present value. And you're going to press the value of your interest. And you're going to put in the value of your period by pressing second function. And, and again, and comp. P, M, T. What is 0 0.18 divided by 12? 0.18 divided by 12 is 0, 0.015. 0, 0, yes. 0, 0, 0,015. So you just substitute and 5 times 12, I think it's 60. 5 times 12, that should be 60. Sorry, those who are calculating using manual calculators. It might take you longer. Otherwise, you just substitute and use your case. Show. The answer is uh, three for present value for, for future value. Oh, I mean, in the exam, you just need to choose one. <laughs> um, okay, Candice, your answer is it for this question that we are answering now? Yes. Okay, thank you. Let's see. Come on. Sorry. Are we winning? So if I substitute the values, I know that my present value is 250,000. My rate, my payment R is what I'm looking for. Then it will be one plus uh, my I of 0, 0.015 to the power of 60 minus one divide by 0 0.015 times 1 plus 0 0.015 to the power 60. And therefore, it meant the answer I will have. It's R is equals to 250,000 because I just need to take the thing in the bracket, divide by 250,000. And that will be 
1.015 to the power of 60 minus 1 because I don't, I'm not going to calculate it as yet. 0, 0,015 times 1, 0.015 to the power 60. And the answer you get here should be somewhere in the region of 6348.36. Let's see on the other side, your compounding periods will be 12. You must let me know if you're not getting the right, the answers as me. Maybe I made a mistake somewhere. The plus or minus, our present value of 250000. Am I still on the right track? Our interest is 18. And our period five so just double check your steps and double check your values and see if we have the same answers so the answer here will be option four is that right yes it's right okay Let's see if we can squeeze in another, another question. Cherry wants to take her family to a vacation in two years time. Suppose she deposit 192.86 in the beginning of every week into the account earning 9.2 interest compounded weekly. Determine the amount you will have in two years. What are they asking you to calculate? Future value. Future value. They're asking you to calculate future value or S. What are you given? You just need to identify the values that are given in there. Let's go and identify them. I will start with the manual one. Am I given the payment R? Yes, which is 192.86. I'm given interest, which is 9.2. Yes. So it will be 0 0.092 divided by my compounding periods. There are 52 weeks. So you just go and calculate that. You will give me the answer once you're done. And they said the vacation will take two years. So in two years time, they need to go on a vacation. So it means the period in two years that she will have this money as well. Our N will be two times 52 weeks. And you can give me the answer for those two. So what is 0 0.92 divided by 52? Uh, those who are calculating manually okay while you're still calculating that so let's go and put in the formula as well so that you can continue while i write the steps for the calculator one so because this is a future value we use one plus i to the power n minus one divide by i so you use that formula so go and calculate the other values and substitute. I will be with you just now. Those calculating with the financial calculator, second function CA, second function P slash Y. Go and find out what your compounding periods are and then press E and T. On and off your calculator, plus or minus. What are we given? We are given the payment, so therefore it means as the value we're going to capture our interest, which will be i slash y, our value of the period, which will be second function, n, and again, second function n the first time, multiplying by the compounding periods, and then n, we're storing the value. 
and the last step, comp P ha. Comp F V. As you can see that the steps are almost exactly the same. You just repeat the steps. By the time you go write the exam, you will feel comfortable. You don't even have to write the steps down. You will just be taking your calculator and then going through the steps. But it requires you to practice. They say practice makes perfect. So you need to practice and practice and practice. <clears throat> Calculating manually, do you have the answer for I? One zero nine two divide by fifty two. It is zero point zero zero one eight. Because our calculators are stored at two decimal. And let me see if I increase the decimals because it's due six. You must remember that um, we need to keep all the decimals right. Interest. So if I keep all the decimals, I get zero comma zero zero. One eight four zero. It's very difficult to write all these numbers. Let's write the formula small. Zero comma zero zero. I go on top of one another. Zero one eight four zero off. Okay, and fifty two times two is one o four. So we can just substitute. We're looking for the future value. We are given one nine two point eight six times one plus zero comma zero zero one eight four to the power one oh four minus one divide by zero comma zero zero one eight four those who are calculating I hope you have your steps right that is fifty two that will be 192.86. This will be 9.2. And this will be 2 years. What is the answer? Let's see. The chat is flicking, flicking, flicking. Conre, is that the answer for now or for the previous? Okay. I see Candy responded twice. So the answer is 4. Is that what you say? Yes. Do you all get option four? Others? Yes. Yes. Okay. So the answer will be option four. Okay. It is seven eighteen, so we still have little time to include another exercise. Siamo wants to buy a franchise that costs 250000 He is planning on using 150000 of his savings and take a loan of the outstanding amount. The loan has to be paid in five years' time and in monthly payments at a fixed interest rate of 17.5 per annum compounded monthly. How much will Tiamo pay on a monthly basis? That is the annuity question we are asked. So what are we given? 
Sorry, Lizzie. Are we attending to the amortization nope. question last uh, week? Nope. I came in late, so. Nope. This is still payment. We're still talking about annuities. Amortization is next week. Okay. okay. Remember, annuities are payments, right? Yes. And we use annuities to do amortization at the later stage, but especially with the present value of an annuity. But today we're talking payments. So what are we given? We know that we need to be calculating payment because that's what they say. How much they will have to pay on a monthly basis? What is our present value or our future value in this instance? What are we given? We are calculating present value of 100,000 because it's 250 minus 150. Present value of 250,000 minus the 150,000 that that will give us the 100,000 because we need to because they say only he's only going to take out a loan of the outstanding amount and he's using 150,000 from his own savings. So there is our present value. You also need to identify what other things you are given. So we know that it's for five years and we know what the interest is and we know what it's compounded monthly. So we can go and start with Yes. Our P is 100,000. Our I is 0, 0,175 divided by 12. Our N is 5 times 12, which is 60. And we can just then calculate our present value of an annuity of R times 1 plus I to the power N minus 1 divided by I times 1 plus I to the power N. Now, you can also write it this way or you can write it like R is equals to P divided by your accumulation factor. 1 plus I to the power N minus 1 divided by I times 1 plus I to the power N. It will give you one and the same thing. The two formulas. Second function, CA. Second function, P slash Y. Put in the compounding periods E and T on and off your calculator. Plus or minus the value given as your present value. The value, second function, and, and again the value I and Y, which is your interest. And then you comp P M T. So we can do it as a competition. Let's see who gets it first. Those with financial calculator and those with manual calculators. Okay. I'm done. <laughs> Are you using a financial calculator? Yes. Yes. No, financial calculators are quick, but also those who are using the manual calculator, you should be able to get it quicker because you will use your Casio calculators to put in the fraction uh, thing, and then it will calculate your answer. So one plus, oh, we still need the value of our I. What is I? Point. 175 divided by 12. It's a very long number, oh, a very, very long one. So I'm just going to keep one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to keep six digits. It's interest. If you want to get your answers right, you need to make sure that you keep all your digits. 
when you are still calculating. So in this instance, on your fraction calculator, you can do fractions on the so that you don't lose the digits. This is 0, 0, 0,0143 plus some numbers. I'm not keeping all of them. Just gonna keep all of in some of them. Anyway, I'm not even going to bother to substitute. You do it on your side and then you can get me the answer because the numbers are very long. Otherwise, I can just do 100,000 divided by 1 plus 0, 0,175 divided by 12 to the power of 60 minus 1 divided by 0, 0,175 divided by 12 times 1 plus 0, 0,175 divided by 12 to the power 60. And that should give you your answer and this side. I will come just double check your statement if you have the same values. Our period is five. Our interest is 17.5. Easy, right? Should be easy. So next month when you write your exam, those who are doing QMI, it should be easy to sail through the questions. Okay, we left with four minutes. So in the next four minutes, I'm just going to recap and go through some of the exercises that are included in the handout. The handout, remember, they are part of uh, the notes. I've already uploaded them, so they are there. You can go through them. So we do have a question uh, on the businesswoman who wants to invest, invest the same sum of money at the end of each quarter for 5,000. And in order to accumulate the total of 30,000 at the end of five years, what is a required quarterly in, um, investment? So you need to look at the question, find what the question is asking you to calculate, identify what is given in the question and answer that. Always remember that loan, Mostly it's present value. Savings, it's mostly future value. If you can always remember that, when you read questions, you will automatically see things comes together because then you will know that this question is asking for uh, is asking me to calculate future value and this one is asking me to calculate present value. I'm sorry. My numbering on, on these things are not right. So I start from four and then I go to three. OK, so there is number three exercise, which is number five in a way. Also, yeah, they give you information. Please identify what you are given and what you need. What you need to be calculating, because yeah, they say what is the amount that they borrow or they borrowed? if they have to make that. So don't assume that because they give you monthly payment, then assume that this is future uh, present value or this is future value. You need to read the statement and make sure that you understand. And based on the things that I just told you, loan, present value. Savings, future value. Future value. Yeah. And the last one, so like I can see that I'm going from four downwards. So this is exercise two, which should be exercise six, probably. And also identify what is given in this question and answer the question. That's all. That is all. And I think this is this is one of those 
that are almost like similar to the previous one, but it's not. Uh, but it's one of the other questions. So you are given the loan, you make a down payment. And you might notice that this question, we might also do it when we do amortization, because I think I took some of the question from amortization into here, because in your exam, most of the time, your annuity questions and amortization questions, they are almost asked in the same question. Like, for example, they will give you the statement, and that statement will relate to question number 23 and question number 24 and question number 25. So you always need to make sure that you work through it because annuities are part of amortization. OK, so we come to the end of the session so far. You have learned how to do some basic calculations when it comes to annuities. The how to calculate the future value of an annuity and how to calculate the present value of an annuity. Remember that annuities are payments made on a regular basis or sub, uh, subsequently or successively, like one after the other. If it's quarterly, therefore it means the payments are made quarterly. If it's monthly, it means it's monthly. So you always need to remember that the compounding periods, you need to divide your interest by the compounding periods and you need to multiply your period by the compounding periods, especially for those ones who are calculating. But if you're using your financial calculator, yeah, you be, the steps are the same. Whether you're doing future value or present value, the steps remain the same. Read what you are given. Write down the steps. It's very important to write down the steps because you are able quickly to see where you have gone wrong and you can fix it and then calculate it. As you are practicing, do that. Don't take shortcuts. Shortcuts won't get you anywhere, especially now while you're still understanding the content and you are preparing to write your exam. And that is me. Any question, any comments before we close of the session? Um, we got a mock examination for two hours and I actually got 85%. Yay. So think for starters, it helps me because two years back I, I did this module and then I completely didn't understand. But now attending your classes, I do. It is my pleasure that at least you see in the light at the end of the tunnel. And I wish you all the best with your exam. If your mock exam is a practice mock exam, like it gives you opportunities to try and try and try those who are not getting it right, please do, because they say practice makes perfect. It's perfect. Yeah. Some, no, some. it's just like an exam, so you only get one chance. Ah, so your lecturers only gives you one chance. They are not fair. They should give you at least two chances. <laughs> because it's a mock exam. It's a mock. So they must open it up to give you two chances. The first chance is to see if you are comfortable with doing the exam, and then you do it again. It's practice. Mock exams are like practice activities. I hope that they give you those questions as a printout, maybe as a PDF so that you can practice. Um, because I understand the concept why they would want you to take a mock exam um, at the at the, um, uh, um, that resembles an exam because they give you some practice so that when you get to the exam, you are able to time yourself because this it's about timing. You are able to time yourself and making sure that you move with the correct space, uh, like speed when you're answering your questions so that you don't, the time doesn't lapse while you're still busy doing the work. And it also gives you some practice so that when you go to the exam, it's not something that you see for the first time. Because I'm going to assume that your assignments are hard copy assignments, but you have to do them online. 
Whereas with the exam, you will never get a hard copy. Everything is online. So it means the screen time plus that you don't get the time to play around then on online. Usually the time moves faster than when you're writing a paper. On paper. OK, so. Someone was thank asking you for, for was was requesting a uh, sorry man, to interrupt. Um, uh, what do you call it? Register attendance. Oh, the register. Let me yes. see if I can paste it. If it's still in my memory. Yes, it's still in the memory. I have just posted it. Um, please make sure that you complete the register. Um, oh, thank you. Yeah, so I will see you next week when we discuss amortization. So those with no, um, those without the financial calculator, I hope by the time you go write the exam, you have your financial calculator. You don't want to lose marks because I think annuities, they, you might get that there are about two or three or four questions asking you about amortizations. And they are very tricky, the amortization questions. Like I said, it includes calculating your present new your payment. It will include calculating either the interest or the outstanding balance or the total. And then they might ask you as well, change if if the payment is no longer this, what will be that? So it's very, very tricky if you don't have your financial calculator and you don't want to lose marks. For that, if you are able to spare 800 rand or plus or minus, because the expensive other 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 places.